One of the great things in the Bible that I enjoy reading about so much are the miracles that God has done among his people throughout life. The miracles that God performed for his people were miracles or were things that sometimes called wonders simply because of the fact that he caused so much awe and wonder in the lives of the people who were able to see those miracles. Those miracles were responsible for so many people coming to believe that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God. But sometimes there were those who were so stricken by the miracles that their desire was to be able to have the same power. And so you read of people like Simon the Sorcerer, a man who was believing in Christ, who was baptized, and later who tried to buy the power to be able to impart the Holy Spirit to whomever he would. There's something about miracles that people look at and desire so much. And we're living in a world today where people still desire to be able to do miracles. And many people believe in that they can and do miracles. I recall one denominational song leader in the service one time leading a song that said, We expect miracles and nothing less will do. But miracles, the age of miracles is past and it's not for us today. But there's still reason for us today to take great excitement in the life that we have as Christians because God has offered us something better than miracles. Two examples that I would give to us tonight. One is when God or Christ had sent out his disciples on what we call the limited commission, just going out to the house of Israel. And when they came back, they came back greatly excited. And the reason they were so excited in Luke 10, 17, they said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us. In your name. Can you imagine the excitement they felt? I can understand how someone would be excited to realize that they've been given a power by God that because of that, even the demons would be subject to you. That's the kind of power they had. But when they came back with that report to Jesus, Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And so Jesus said, you're going to have more power than just having power over the demons. You'll have all of this power that I'm giving you. But as he announced it, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall as lightning. There was the beginning of the end of Satan's power over men. In the book of Mark, chapter 3 and verse 27, Jesus told about how that no man can spoil the strong man's house unless he first of all binds the strong man. Satan was going to have to be bound. And in the book of Revelation, chapter 20 and verse 2, we learn of the mighty angel who went down to the pit and took a chain and bound Satan for a thousand years. And Satan's limited today. He doesn't have the power over us that he once had. That power has been limited by God. And so these miracles are great things that are done. But even so, when Jesus spoke to his disciples after that, he said to them, Nonetheless, rejoice not in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. I've never done a miracle. I'm never going to do one. You've never done a miracle, and you never will do one. But listen, you have a reason to rejoice in life if you're a Christian because your name is written in heaven. There's something better than a miracle, to have your name written in heaven. A second example I think about in the Bible was when Jesus was talking about John the Baptist. Jesus described John by saying, there is not a, of those born of women, there is not arisen a greater than John the Baptist. And there were those who came to Jesus, and they said to him, in regard to John, John performed no sign, but all things that John spoke about this man were true. John never had the opportunity to do miracles either in this life. He was just like you and I. But you know what John did do? Something even greater than a miracle? He bore a consistent, faithful testimony to Jesus Christ. Everything that he ever said or taught about Christ was the absolute truth. And you know, you and I can do the same thing. We're not ever going to do a miracle, but we can do something better than that. We can bear a truthful testimony to Christ. If we in our teachings and our preaching to people will make sure that everything we say about Christ is the absolute truth, it's that which comes to us from the Bible, then we're doing something better than a miracle. 
And so tonight, I would ask you the question, first of all, is your name written in heaven? If it isn't, why not make the change to do what God wants you to do, that your name can be written in the Lamb's book of life? If you believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, to the extent that you're willing to repent of your sins, confess Him before this good audience here, you can be buried with Christ in baptism and have all of your sins removed. And when you do that, your name will be written in heaven. And then as a child of God, you can live your lives in faithful obedience to God. Faithfully, every day in your life, living as Christ has commanded us to live. Testifying by your example that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. You'll be doing something greater than a miracle. If you become his child and your name's written in heaven, but you haven't been living faithful to him as you should, the Bible teaches us we need to repent of those sins and pray to God and do so with the full assurance, according to 1 John 1, 9, that God, who is faithful, will forgive us of our sins. So tonight, whether you may need to become a child of God or whether as a child of God you need to be restored to Him, we encourage you to respond in obedience to His will, to do what He says, that you might have something greater than miracles in your life. If you need to respond, please come to Him now while we stand and sing.